Greetings and welcome to this instructional video for installing Neo4j on Ubuntu Linux using Amazon EC2. For those of you that are here for my Business Analytics 6356 class, do keep in mind that this exercise is optional but strongly encouraged because getting this type of hands-on experience can be very valuable. Now, of course, like with our other installations, we're going to have to create an account in Amazon AWS if you haven't already done that. And doing so does require you to provide a credit card number. Now, I'm going to point out during these instructions that we're going to be able to select free options and you shouldn't incur any cost, but do be careful about what you select. And when you're done with this, I would suggest going ahead and just shutting it down to make sure that you don't accidentally run up a big bill. So let's go ahead and get started by going to aws.amazon.com. I'm going to click this big orange button for sign in to the console. And uh, you'll have to provide your username and password, which I already have saved here. And uh, I'm going to be going through the first half of this process pretty quickly because if you have followed along with the other installation videos, you've been through this process of deploying an, an AWS instance in the past. Now, if you haven't gone through the previous videos, I would suggest maybe going back and watching the first 10 minutes or so of the MongoDB installation video, because it's going to be all the steps you see here, uh, just I go into a little bit more depth explaining them in that video. So I'm gonna start by going to EC2, and just like before, we're going to use a private key to authenticate to our server. So if we haven't already generated a key pair, we need to do that in the key pairs section under network and security. And in fact, let's just go ahead and create a new one. I'm gonna click this orange create key pair button, and I'm gonna call this Neo4j key, and I'm gonna select PPK because I am going to be using PuTTY to connect and I'm going to click create key pair. And so that just creates a new private key that's going to be associated with this instance we're about to deploy. Okay, now I'm gonna go deploy the instance. So I'm gonna click on EC2 dashboard and note that I have a couple of things running here already. Depending on how much you've done with AWS, you may or may not have any instances running. So this is what I currently have running for the class and I'm blurring this out at this point just kind of for the safety of our environment. But I'm gonna click this orange launch instances button here at the top. And we have a, a big list here of different types of instances we can deploy. Uh, Amazon Linux, Red Hat, SUSE, Ubuntu, and then several different versions of Windows. Uh, all of our, or most of our Windows options are going to have some charge associated with them. Uh, however, this uh, Ubuntu 20.04, which is what we're going to be using, is free tier eligible. So we should be able to do this without incurring any cost. So that's what I'm going to select. And uh, we're just going to keep on this T.2 micro instance because that is the only one that is free tier eligible. That gives us one CPU and one gig of memory. Uh, if you wanted to bump that up a little bit, you can for a slight price increase, but uh, for the purpose of this demo, one CPU and one gig of memory should be fine. Now in the MongoDB video, we do click through all the additional steps and explain those in a little bit of detail. But for this video, I'm just going to go ahead and click review and launch. Okay, so it gives us a little bit of an overview of uh, what's going to be configured. I'm going to click the blue launch button. And here is where we have to select the private key that we want to authenticate with. So I'm going to select an existing key pair, this Neo4j key that we just uh, created. Of course, if you had created a key for HBase or for MongoDB, we could just reuse that same private key. Then you have to click the box that says, I acknowledge I have access to this private key because this is uh, effectively your password. And if you don't have access to this private key, there is no way you can authenticate to the server. So I'm gonna check this box and click the blue launch instances button. And this is going to take just a moment. I'm gonna click on view instances, which takes us back to the EC2 dashboard. And for a t2.micro instance, this only takes a few seconds to deploy typically. So just hang out here for one minute and we'll watch this change from pending to running. There we go. So we have a brand new Linux server up and running. If we 
click the checkbox here, we get some important information about it. One of the most important being this public IP4 address. That's how we're going to connect to this instance. So I'm gonna select this and say copy. And now I'm going to bring up putty so that we can connect to it. And let me zoom in here. So in our putty window, I'm just going to paste that IP address and I'm gonna create a new saved session. I'm gonna call it Neo4j demo. And one additional thing that we have to do here is to tell Putty that we want to connect using the SSH key or the private key that we had generated. So in this panel here on the left, I'm going to expand SSH, I'm going to click on off, and there's an area that says private key file for authentication. I'm gonna click browse, and I'm going to browse to where that key file was downloaded, which uh, I haven't moved it yet. I would suggest you put it somewhere safe but in this case, it's just in my downloads folder. So I'm gonna select that, click open, make sure my session still looks good, yep. And I'm gonna click this open button. Now Putty is going to pop up an error message that says uh, the server's host key is not cached. That just happens the very first time you connect to a new instance. So I'm gonna click on yes. And now, Putty says log in as, I'm gonna connect as Ubuntu, and then it uses my private key as the password to authenticate with. And at this point, I am connected to our new Linux instance, okay? So our next step is going to be to install Neo4j using the apt package manager. Now these instructions can all be found on Neo4j's website. Uh, and it has instructions for installing on Debian Linux. Uh, Ubuntu is based on Debian, so those kind of go hand in hand. And I will post the URL for those instructions in the description of this video. But the first step is to add the key for the Neo4j repository to apt. So there's the command for doing that. And then we are going to add the address of the repository to apt. So there is the command for doing that. And then we need to tell apt to update its list of repositories. So we do that by saying sudo apt-get update. Let's see. Sorry, it ran before I could uh, show you. sudo apt get update. And then it is going through all of its list of repositories and, and updating. And then it says it's done. Okay, and then our final step is to say sudo apt dash get install neo4j. So sudo is a super user do that's getting us basically an administrative level uh, command at the terminal, apt git is telling our package manager we want to get something, install, and then neo4j is the package we want to install. So when I hit enter here, it says this is going to consume 312 meg of disk space. Do you want to continue? Yes. And it will take just a moment for that to download and install. And at this point, our Neo4j installation is complete and Neo4j is up and running on this server. However, by default, Neo4j can only be accessed from the machine that it is installed on. So we actually need to loosen up that, uh, that restriction just a little bit so we can connect from our client computers. So we're going to need to uh, edit one of the configuration files for Neo4j, and that is in the Etsy Neo4j directory. So I'm going to type cd to change directory, forward slash Etsy, E-T-C. So that puts us in the Etsy directory, and then I'm going to cd into the Neo4j directory. And here we have neo4j.conf, which is the configuration file for Neo4j. Now, in order to edit this, I'm going to use the nano text editor. And since this is a system file, I'm gonna to have to use the sudo command to elevate my command to an administrative level. So I'm gonna type sudo nano neo4j.conf. 
Now here is our configuration file and there are three places we need to change the network configuration. So I'm just clicking down the network, our network connection configuration. And here we are, bolt connector. Uh, it says it is listening at the address, uh, nothing, colon 7687. Okay, so since it doesn't provide an IP address here, that's only listening on the local, uh, local IP address. So we're gonna actually change this, and I'm going to put 0.0.0.0, .0 which just tells Linux that we want to listen on all IP addresses that are assigned to this machine. We're gonna do the same thing for our HTTP connector. And then we're not going to be configuring HTTPS, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this machine in a state that we could if we wanted to and say that we're going to listen uh, on, IP on all of our available IP addresses. So I'm gonna say control X to exit out of this, save modified buffer, I'm gonna say yes, and we'll write over the neo4j.conf file. So we've made some changes to the configuration of the neo4j server, and now to pick up those changes, we need to restart the service. So I'm gonna say sudo service neo4j restart going to take just a moment and that's going to stop our Neo4j database service and then start it again. And when it starts again, it's going to pick up this new configuration. Okay, so at this point, we can actually disconnect from our Linux server. We're not going to be needing this again for the duration of the video. And I'm going to go back just to our AWS console here. And there is one additional change we need to make to this instance uh, in order to connect to it, and that's going to be to open up the firewall rules a little bit. And uh, while we're here, I'm actually going to give this a name so we can recognize it a little bit more easily of Neo4j demo. So in order to open up our firewall rules, we've uh, got this instance selected. I'm gonna click on the security tab in AWS and this particular instance has just one security group assigned to it. And this is just kind of a random identifier that AWS applies. But I'm going to click on that. And you can see we currently have just one firewall rule that Amazon automatically puts into place, which allows us to connect over port 22, which is the port that SSH runs over. And I talk about this in a little bit more detail in the MongoDB installation video, but for right now, we just need to add two additional firewall rules to allow us to connect to the Neo4j browser interface, and then to allow uh, the Neo4j bolt connection to occur. So I'm going to click edit inbound rules and we're going to add two firewall rules that correspond to the ports that we just uh, assigned to our all IP addresses in the neo4j.conf file. So SSH is already there. I'm gonna click add rule. It's going to be a custom TCP rule and I'm going to add port 7474, that's the port that the Neo4j browser web interface runs on. And I'm gonna open that up to 0.0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0, which is just shorthand for every IP address in the world. And I'm gonna add one more rule for our bolt connection, which is port 7687. And again, that's going to be to the entire world and click on save rules. So now those firewall rules are in place and need to copy my IP address just once more so I know what that is. Now I'm going to open a new web browser and I'm going to go to that IP address colon 7474. Four. And we are now connected to our Neo4j instance that we just installed. OK, 
Okay, so the connection URL, uh, this is why we had to open up that other port, 7687. This is just kind of an administrative thing for Neo4j. And when you install a new instance of Neo4j, both the username and password are Neo4j. So we're going to say username Neo4j, password Neo4j, and click connect. And after just a moment, it's going to ask us to change the password to something a little bit more secure. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click change password. And now we are connected to Neo4j. This is the uh, graph browser interface. We can uh, issue commands here, and then the output of the commands is going to be shown right under us. So uh, if we were to say create, uh, let's say student who has a name of Mark. Okay, we've created uh, a new node. We're gonna create another student node named Steve. And we could say, match a return a and we see the two nodes oops we see the two nodes that we have just created steve and mark so at this point we have our running neo4j instance and we could create relationships between these nodes and run all kinds of great queries but that's going to be covered in our other videos so until then i uh, hope this has been useful and go forth and do great things <music>